The gentleman from Alabama. Mr. Speaker, I yield two minutes to the gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Garrett. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized for two minutes. I thank the chair. Thank the speaker. I come to the floor realizing that there is a problem on Wall Street that will affect Main Street, and I also come here today hopeful but also realistic. I, um, I will not be supporting this bill today, but I know the bill will pass later on because so much has been added to it to get the votes. But I am hopeful, then, that all the promises that have been made by the proponents of this bill will come true after we give $700 billion to Secretary Paulson and whoever follows him in two or three months from now. The promise is that the markets will open up and the markets will go up and credit will be free-flowing soon. But I come here also realistic, realistic to know that if you don't tackle the underlying problems, we will be right back in this House again on this floor seeking more money and more reform. Realistic also to know if you don't allow for alternatives, you will not get the best bill. And we know that Speaker Pelosi and the White House was not open to listening to any alternatives, and there was alternatives out there. And realistic also in knowing that if you do fail to investigate early enough, these problems will come up as they have. Back in the spring of this year, we and my Republican colleagues asked for investigations on this matter, and we were rebuffed, being told by the chairman, quote, I do not think it's necessary that we have hearings on the soonest possible date. Madam Speaker, I come here in not in support of this bill, but in support of doing something in light of the remarks of economist Robert Schimmer, who says, the U.S. has long been a beacon of free markets. When economic conditions turn sour in other countries, we give very clear instructions on what to do. Balance the budget, maintain free trade, the rule of law, and do not prop up failing enterprises. He said it. I agree with him. That has always been the U.S. approach, and I believe it is the correct approach. But when the United States ignores its own advice in this situation, we reduce our credibility of this stance. Rewriting the rules of the game at this stage will therefore have serious ramifications, not only for the people of this country, but for the globe and the world as well. You see, Madam Speaker, the social cost of this is far, far greater than the $700 billion that we talk about today. And with that, I yield back.